Hello, welcome to the Friday, August 13th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from a parking lot close to Seewalde, Germany. Due to limited internet access, uh, today's uh, podcast will be a little bit short. Well, it looks like we are not going to wake up from Brent Nightmare anytime soon. Microsoft published yet another advisory related to Brent Spooler vulnerabilities, even though the impact isn't quite clear and a little bit uh, disputed. According uh, to the advisory, at least as originally uh, released, uh, this does indicate a remote uh, code execution vulnerability, but apparently, according to others uh, like uh, Will Dorman, who is usually right about these things, this may be sort of a copy-paste mistake, and it's really only a local privilege escalation vulnerability. This one is a little bit different than uh, some of uh, the prior vulnerabilities. The prior vulnerabilities relied on the attacker installing a malicious uh, printer driver on the print server. In this case, a victim would be a client connecting to a malicious print server. That print server would then copy the malicious code to the client and execute it with system uh, privileges. Proof of concept code has already been made available. And according to CrowdStrike and others, uh, Print Nightmare, at least the prior vulnerabilities that uh, were patched well back in June, July, and August are already being used by ransomware gangs. No real surprise here, given that ransomware often does sort of rely on these lateral movement uh, kind of uh, attacks and exploits. So a uh, print nightmare fits right in their playbook. It's a relatively straightforward uh, vulnerability to exploit at this point. So uh, no big surprise that it's used for ransomware. Then a couple stories related to cryptocurrencies. First of all, you may have heard about it already. A large attack against a distributed finance organization, Poly Network. Apparently, $600 million worth of various altcoins were stolen in this heist. What's sort of a little bit different and interesting here is that the attacker actually returned about a third of the heist so far. Poly Networks uh, and others have uh, sort of pressured the attackers, uh, told them that they knew who they were. They had email addresses, IP addresses, at least that's what they claimed. And apparently uh, this uh, pressure tactic had uh, some success. Some of the cryptocurrency was also frozen by uh, networks uh, that apparently were used in attempt uh, to turn uh, the particular uh, loot into real money. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday.